Hello and welcome back to the channel. I am picking up today on our series in digital mixers. Here on this channel I talk about church tech and I've been working my way through a series on digital audio and how to get your most out of your digital mixers. So we've done so far a session on uh, setting gains and how do we set our gains on our digital mixers. We've done a session on EQs and how do we understand EQs and how do we use an EQ. In the last session, I actually took a sidestep slightly and we did a bit of theory and tried to understand the ADSR envelope and how sounds change over time and how we understand the tone of that instrument changing over time as well. And we're going to apply some of that theory today because today we're going to start looking at compressors and how do we set up a compressor. So if all that sounds good, why don't you go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. It will really help this channel if you do. And also consider subscribing. If you use a digital mixing desk and you want to know how to get the most out of your digital mixing desk, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell icon, and you'll be notified as I continue bringing out these videos. So as I say, today we are going to be talking about compressors. We're going to be talking about what they are, how they work, how we understand them and how they relate to the ADSR envelope that we started talking about last time and how we can understand the change of tone that we might expect to find on a certain instrument given the way that that compressor is working based on that ADSR filter. Now again, this will all start to make sense for you as we go forwards, as we start to dive into this. Um, so bear with me and hopefully if you've not yet watched the ADSR video, you need to go back and watch that one. But if you've seen it already, some of what we discussed there will start to make a lot more sense here as well. So I'm gonna go into my compressor and as soon as I do, you can see there the audio jumping around all over the place. Now you're not actually going to hear the compressor taking any effect here. I'm actually recording my voice out before it goes through this compressor. And I'm doing that deliberately because I don't want to show you how to set a compressor for a vocal. What I want to teach you is how do we set compressors generally and how can we expect them to affect the tone based on what we learned last time, based on the ADSR envelope and how we understand the ADSR envelope. So uh, this is much more a theoretical look rather than just a, uh, if you dial in these exact settings, then you're gonna get a decent vocal compressor. The hope and the theory here is that I'm gonna teach you a much broader understanding of compressors and how you can apply compressors to any sound, not just a voice, but guitars, basses, drums, whatever, anything you might be using that you wanna put through a compressor. If you can understand how the compressor's working and how it's affecting different parts of that sound, you're gonna have a far better understanding of how to use one and how to apply those settings yourself. So it's not just about copy and paste these settings into your own compressor and off you go, but actually understand exactly what this thing is starting to do and how it's working. Now, before we dive too much into this, I just need to explain for some of you perhaps what a compressor is. What is a compressor and what does it do? Well, a compressor is a sound activated device. So it's something that is activated at a certain point um, and as sound hits a certain level, a certain volume, that compressor, that effect is going to start being affected, being applied to that sound. So we have what we call a threshold. The threshold is the point at which this sound is going to start being affected or this, um, this thing is going to be starting to be applied to our sound. And anything below our threshold, any levels of sound below the threshold, have zero effect on the compressor itself. Okay, So the compressor isn't doing anything to sounds that are too quiet effectively to go through our threshold. Our threshold is saying at what point are we going to start applying this sound. And so we have our threshold level that we can adjust up and down. And if you have a very quiet sound, you might need to take your threshold down to start having an effect on that sound. If it's a very loud sound, hopefully you're gonna have reasonable gain levels on your um, mixing desk and that sound's gonna be fairly loud. The compressor is going to start taking effect when the volume hits a certain point and goes through that threshold and now we are starting to apply the compressor. Now a compressor does what it says on the tin. It starts to squash down 
those sounds that have gone through the threshold. So as our sound level jumps up, it hits that threshold, it goes through the threshold, and anything above our threshold is going to start to be compressed. It's going to be squeezed down. And so we can start to uh, reduce that sound by a certain percentage, a certain ratio, we call it in a compression. We have a compression ratio. And we're saying, so how much do we want this sound to be reduced by? So you could have a one to two ratio, and we could say every decibel that it goes over, we want to squeeze it down by half. We're gonna half that level that's going through. Fairly typically in a compressor, we might have a one to four ratio, or one to six ratio even. Um, for something, if you really want to squash it hard, you could even go up to a one to eight or a one to 10 or even one to 12 ratio on your compressor. That'd be a fairly hard compressor at that point, but you could do it. Um, those are the kind of ratio numbers that we would start to look at. And that means that for every decibel that goes through the threshold, we're gonna to start to squeeze it down by that much. So if you go through uh, 12 decibels at a one to 12, it's gonna drop it down from 12 down to one. It's gonna be a big squash on that. Now, as we start to look at some of the other settings, it's worth just coming and looking in here at the, uh, the software itself. So we can see, um, a few things here in the software, and a lot of this will be duplicated on the mixing desk screen itself. So if you look at your screen on your mixing desk, you'll probably see a number of these similar um, items, these similar labels on your mixing desk. So we've got an attack and then a release. You'll have an input level. So you'll, this, this indicator here on the left-hand side is showing the level of sound coming in. You also see an output level which is the sound going out after it's been hit by the compressor. You see here, um, you'll see a level that goes down. It's so showing a sort of negative value, if you like. And sometimes that will say GR or gain reduction next to it. And that is how much are we taking out of our sound when we apply the compressor. You'll see a nice big diagram in the middle. And this is really showing us what, what I was telling, telling you at the beginning, the, the threshold, the point at which sound is starting to be applied, and then how much are we applying it by. So we can take our ratio up, and as we take that up, you'll see that it starts to really start to squash that down. Like I say, if we can take it up to 12, 16 even, 20, one to 20 ratio, one to 40, and then it just goes infinity. That's, you know, beyond that point, it's, it's really very heavily compressed. We really would be very unlikely to use settings that high. The gain level is what we call a makeup gain. We're actually adding gain back on again to the um, overall output. And often what we try to do with our compressors is we try to make sure that the overall volume isn't affected by the compressor. It's greyed out at the minute because the, the compressor itself isn't actually turned on. So we can turn that on and then everything starts to light up and we can see now the gain reduction and we can see the output level in relation to our input level and it's slightly down from where the input level is. And so we can use the gain there to pull that back up again. Basically what you want to do here is to look at what's my gain reduction by the compressor and try to add that same amount of gain on on the output side. So I can see here that if I speak really loudly, I'm going down to negative 10 or even below negative 10 there. But generally speaking, my average voice is probably about in the middle of that, which is probably four or five dB, maybe even six dB. Uh, that's the effect that the compressor is having. So that's the amount that I want to add back on on the output side in order to make these roughly equal. So I can put five dB of gain on here and take my audio level up to plus five dB. And then if I turn my compressor on and off, I should hear relatively no change in the volume of my voice in this instance. So um, as I turn the compressor on, the output level should still be about the same. And if I turn it off, again, the output level should, should barely change. And that's, that's what we're trying to achieve here with our gain. It's worth noting as well though, that the gain is gonna boost everything. So what we're doing with our compressors is we're just squeezing the very loudest parts of our sound but the gain itself is gonna reduce every part of that sound. So everything below the threshold is gonna be reduced. So if you don't have a very good 
gain, input gain at the very front end of your mixing desk. If you go back to the gain video that I made right at the beginning, in fact, I'll put a link up here and you can go and check that out. If you don't have very good gain at the front end of your mixing desk, you're going to get a lot of background noise. And we spoke there about the signal to noise ratio. If you've got a lot of background noise and not very much signal, and then we apply a lot of gain here in our compressor, we're actually going to be boosting that background noise level that's below the threshold. All of that's going to be boosted as well. So if you've got a lot of noise coming through, adding gain to it is just going to boost that noise at this point in the signal chain. So just be aware of that. So that's a kind of brief overview of the settings that you're likely to find within a compressor. So let's start to dial in on some of this stuff and start to understand the nitty gritty of how these various different settings are going to affect what we heard with the ADSR filter previously. Now the first place we're going to come to is going to be our attack time. Our attack time is saying how quickly after a sound goes through the threshold are we going to start to compress it back down again. And this is where we can really start to see the connection between our ADSR filter and our compression settings. Because we had an attack time on our ADSR filter. The A of ADSR is attack. How quickly does that sound go from nothing up to its maximum? That's the attack of that sound. And we can change here the attack time of our compressor. How quickly are we going to start to attack that sound that's gone through that threshold? And that, that attack going from nothing to its maximum is the point where we're most likely to go through our threshold of our compressor. So if I, we think back to that guitar strum, I hit that guitar string, we had a fairly sharp percussive sound at the front end of that guitar sound. How quickly is our compressor going to start squeezing that back down again? And the quicker we make our attack sound, the more of the attack envelope we're going to start to squeeze back down. And we're going to start to change the tone of that sound. If we think we had a lot of that high frequency content coming in in that attack, and as that sound decayed and released, we started to hear more of the warmth of that tone coming through. So if we have a short attack sound, what we're saying is we're going to really start to squeeze down that initial percussive attack on that sound. So that high frequency content that we had early on in that note, we're going to start to squash that down. So we can start to understand here how this is going to affect the tone. And maybe that's what you want. This, I'm not saying that any of these things are going to be good or bad. They're just, this is, this is what we might expect to find. So as we start to change the attack time on our um, compressor here, we're going to expect to hit more or less of that attack of that sound envelope. And if we think back to what we looked at, we saw a snare drum hit compared to a guitar hit. In both of those instances, the attack was pretty short. I mean, we were talking like less than a tenth of a second. So we're talking like yeah, maybe four milliseconds or something, perhaps even less than that for that total attack time. The attack and the decay where it started to drop back down again, we're maybe, maybe there we were looking at 0.1 of a second. It did change from one instrument to another, but we said that maybe something like a bowed violin would be much, much longer and we could look at a much longer time frame for that. Typically, if we're looking at compression settings, an attack time of 2.5 is going to be a really very, very hard attack time. That's a, that's a really short attack time. That's going to be attacking pretty much everything that goes through that compressor. We can very easily take that up. Um, for, for something like a drum hit, I would probably be looking more like 8, 9, 10, maybe 11 or 12 milliseconds on the attack time. That's still a relatively short attack time. And that would be um, probably somewhere more like where I'd be looking for something like a, a snare drum hit or something like that. If you want to have something a little bit longer for maybe acoustic guitar, you might take that up a little bit further for an acoustic guitar into, say, the teens, perhaps. It just depends as to what sort of sound you want out of that guitar. And for something like a vocal, I would open that up even more. So for a vocal, I'd be looking into the high teens, 17, 18, 19, maybe even up to 20 milliseconds as a longer um, attack time for something like a vocal sound. 
but just play with that because you, the more of that you have, the more of that initial attack on our envelope is going to be coming through that compressor without being affected. So just think how that will change the tone of that sound before you start to compress it and take it back down again. Okay, so think, think ADSR envelope and how am I changing that with the attack time on my compressor? Okay, the shorter that is, the more of that attack of that sound we're gonna be squashing, and the longer that is, the more of that attack time is gonna get through that threshold unaffected before the threshold starts to kick in, the compressor, sorry, starts to kick in. Hopefully you're still with me. This is starting to get quite technical. Hopefully you can start to see the connections between what we discussed last time and how that's gonna affect us on our compression, compression settings here. The other thing that we also wanna have a look at here is the knee of our compressor. And the knee is this angle here. It's represented with this blue circle in this instance. Um, and we can see how, how sharp that knee is. So basically, at what point when it goes through the compressor are we gonna to start to hit that? Um, and how, how sudden is that gonna happen? If I hit this soft knee button here, you'll see that that suddenly becomes a much smoother, almost like a kind of curve. It's, it's not quite a curve, but it's, it's certainly softened that down. And so instead of saying we're gonna go completely unaffected and then suddenly we've got this sharp knee where uh, the sound actually gets hit, actually effectively the compressor starts attacking the sound a little bit earlier in order to soften that down and it's not quite such a hard change when it goes through there. Okay, so that's ADSR and our attack time on our compressor and you can just sort of start to picture how that's gonna change that, that tone of that sound as that compressor starts to take effect. The other thing that's also gonna to start to take an effect is the release time because of the release of our compressor is going to change how the release and sustain and release of our ADSR envelope also start to take an effect as well. So our release time here on our compressor is saying how quickly after the volume of the sound has dropped back below the threshold are we going to release the compression on it. And if we think back to our ADSR envelope where in the sustain and the release we had a lot more of that warmth, that body of that tone coming through, um, if we have a fairly quick release time on our compressor, what we're gonna find is the initial attack and decay of the tone of our sound, the ADSR envelope attack and decay, they could get squashed down by the compressor, but the warmth of the sustain and the release might come back up again, and you might find that this compressor releases that sound and we get a lot of that warmth coming back into that note. Maybe that's something you want, maybe that isn't, that's entirely up to you. One thing just to be careful of here is you might find that the, the, as the compressor releases, the volume might go back up again. If you're really compressing something quite hard, that, that attack and that decay could be squashed down and the sustain and the release could start to go back up. And where we said previously that the attack is gonna go up to the highest point and then it's gonna decay, sustain and release, actually the compressor could reverse that and the attack and the decay could drop down because it's being compressed with the sustain actually going back up because the compressor is now releasing and then the release of the note actually ends up being higher than the initial attack was because the compressor was squashing that and is releasing that. And what you can start to hear is this kind of throbbing, thrumming, low frequency where if you if you imagine a guitar sound, we hit the guitar strings, that is being attacked and squashed down by the compressor, but you com the compressor then releases as the body of that note opens up and you get this warm kind of effect that happens. And it, it can sound very weird. That generally isn't a good thing to have. So if you've got that kind of thing happening on your guitar where the body of that note just suddenly starts to, starts to resonate out, it might be because your release time is actually, well, it's one of two things. Either your release time is too short and you're releasing that note 
when the as the note's supposed to be sustaining and decaying uh, in fact the compressor is releasing it and it's opening that note back out again and you're getting this weird kind of bass resonant thing that's coming off the back end of your guitar strums um, or it's a sign that you're just compressing that guitar too much and actually your threshold is too low too much of that sound is being hit by that compressor and you need to ease that compressor off to just give that attack a bit more space and let that attack come through. Or the other way you could look at it is to just lengthen that attack time so the initial tack of the guitar and the decay of the guitar are not being squeezed quite so quickly. Hopefully that makes sense and you can start to see the ADSR envelope and what that might look like and how if we apply that to an attack and release time on a compressor, how that might start to change that tone of that sound. Now I really want to encourage you to play with a compressor. Compressors are fantastic tools. And I know for some people they can be quite scary and people can get confused by a lot of the settings here on a compressor, um, but it really isn't that scary if you start to break it down and start to think what are these things doing and try to listen to those changes that are happening in that compressor because it's such a powerful tool and it can make such a difference to the sound and it can be your best friend it can really help you to keep control on your sound it can really pin things into place um, so it's well worth getting to grips with a compressor and understanding some of these settings because it really can change the sound and the mix and the way that you use your mixing desk. But it's just worth taking some time to wrap your head around some of this stuff and understand what it's going to be doing. Um, so feel free to, to play with your release times and your attack times and start to see how those things are going to change. Uh, start to adjust the gain, try to use that, um, that button, turn the compressor on and off and listen to how that's changing the overall volume of your sound. Try to keep it even if you can and hopefully that ADSR envelope that we talked about before, attack, decay, sustain, release, you can see how that applies to your compressor and hopefully how that will change the tone of that sound. I'm going to leave you with that, leave you there for today. So get going with your compressors, have fun with it, play with it, experiment with it. Let me know what you enjoy, like tell me about the settings that you're using and what's working for you and how you've dialed in your compression settings and what you've done to do that. Uh, I would be really interested to hear what you've done with your compressors, how do you set your attack and release times and those kind of things, it would be great to hear. That's it, enjoy this video, have fun, play with your compressors and I'll see you in the next one. B-roll. Compressor on.